Hi everyone, it's Sir Simon Keeling here and it's Friday the 20th of January. Thanks for watching and thanks for your continued support for the site. The site's all kept free of charge by the adverts you see around here, so if you see one you like, do click on it, go through to the advertiser and uh, it shows support for the advertiser, generates revenue for us. Don't just click on the adverts, really, nearly obviously, you know, if you want to go through to the advertiser, click on it and, and go through. All I ask is that you choose us rather than anybody else to click on the adverts. Um, Okay, got a, a, a bit of a caveat for you um, first up this morning. Uh, listen to me carefully, snow lovers. Okay, listen very, very carefully. And cold weather lovers too. Um, I'm going to show you uh, the weather for the back end of next week. Now, what I don't want is people coming back and saying, you said, you said, you said, if this doesn't turn out the way that it's planned. I'm going to be very careful in the way that I say things, so listen very, very carefully. I am not going in for... Um, the Thames to freeze over, snow blizzards lasting for two weeks. Just listen very carefully to what the forecast is actually hinting at at the moment. OK, um, so here we go. Um, this is the uh, temperature profile from the GFS for the next seven days. Red is the important one. This is temperature. And notice how it dips off. Uh, as we get into the middle part of next week. Middle of next week is crucial. This is for Glasgow, but it could be for just about anywhere in the UK. Look how those temperatures fall off quickly in the back end of next week. Um, <coughs> also, um, wanted to show you um, the um, ensemble probability. This is the way that the ensemble is seeing things just at the moment. And it's the probability of temperatures at 850 millibars being below minus five. Now, you don't need to understand what that's about, but generally what we say is that when it goes below minus five at 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet, that's when we're into, into cold weather. And uh, I've really pushed this one because you can see that it, it's kind of hinting at it, look, uh, during the second half of the week next week, but then look what happens. Here it is. This is the 27th. So um, this is next Friday, but look, We've got nothing at all before then, but suddenly, whack, in comes this cold weather, and that takes us through to the 4th of February. That's how the ensemble is seeing things develop just at the moment. Um, let's compare the charts, and let's have a look at the models. They are looking much cooler from uh, Thursday of next week. This is the ECMWF. This trough is critical here. You notice that we've got um, low pressure um, across the country. This is cool weather moving across the country on the ECMWF. This is cold conditions. These are easterly winds here coming across Europe, running up through the eastern side of the UK. Milder Atlantic air trying to get into the west. A battle taking place between mild air to the west, cool air to the east. That equals rain and possibly snow. So how's that compare? Well, this is the GFS. Uh, trough is further east, more significantly developed low look. This is again for Friday midday, uh, next Friday at midday. Here's the high over Scandinavia, easterly flow look through the British Isles. That's cold and also brings a risk of snow too. Where the snow would be, how heavy it would be, not sure at the moment, but that's backing up on this idea of much colder with a risk of snow as well. And then the Canadian model. Again, we're looking here. Uh, actually, we're not looking there at the right time, are we? Let's uh, let's just pull that back by 24 hours. There we go. Um, <clears throat> Friday midnight this time from the Canadian Ensemble model. Low pressure. Look, here's our trough. Low pressure in the North Sea on this one. Cold northerly winds. Risk of snow. Again, where it would be, how heavy it would be is uncertain but the fact is they're all going and all consistent in this idea of cold weather at the back end of next week how does it look on the upper air charts well here's the uh, 7 to 10 day uh, 500 millibar flow the means of the 500 millibar flow so this is from next friday through to the following monday which is going to be the 30th and ecmwf is on the left we've got gfs on the right notice how um the um, ECMWF has this large high look over Scandinavia. It's got this cold pool across the eastern parts of Russia look and a trough into the western part of Europe. GFS makes much more of that trough uh, across Eastern Europe and builds this ridge in look which blocks through and causes this spell of cold northeasterly winds. Jet stream coming off the States look into the Atlantic just gets split in two as it hits this ridge. Portion going north portion of it coming south 
UK staying in the cold weather. Same with the ECMWF, jet stream screams across the Atlantic, splits in two, section of it goes north of the British Isles, section goes south, we're stuck in between the two areas. So again, this builds this continued idea of colder weather. There's our North Atlantic Oscillation looks. Again, backing up the idea even more. We start off positive, look, with westerlies across the Atlantic, then dip into negative territory. And just look what happens to the control run there. It completely dips out into uh, February. This is a cold pattern. This is where westerly winds are broken down across the Atlantic, so we're not getting that pounding from the westerly winds, and the, and the weather systems can't get in from the west, which means that our weather is significantly cooler. Now let's have a look at the Arctic Oscillation. The Arctic Oscillation gives us a measure of how cold conditions are, uh, sorry, how strong the winds are around the, Arctic, around the Arctic Circle. When they're positive, we've got strong winds up there, which means that the mild conditions, the cold weather, is held up at the poles. But when we go into negative territory, then the cold air can drain southwards. And just look what happens. Bombs down into negative territory, real significant negative territory. This is cold weather on the way, folks. I think we are going to be seeing the start of winter. Okay, um, just one other thing to show you, which was um, a reminder of where I saw temperatures going first to the 10th of February, and I could be out on this. This may actually turn out to be cooler than I've put here. What I tried to pick up on was the idea of the trough being west of Ireland, of keeping these sort of areas around or above normal. But the high across Scandinavia, which much much cooler conditions coming across Scandinavia and bringing cold conditions into the British Isles. This, well, on the base of today, could be near in minus ones to minus fours below normal across much of the British Isles. But, you know, we'll wait and see how, uh, how that develops. I might need to update this during the course of this weekend. But the message that I want you to take away today is that it does look like um, winter could well be on the cards back end of next week. Moderate confidence in the forecast. Uh, but that's all it is at the moment. We can't say more than moderate confidence. What I'm going to do is put a posting together about um, confidence levels and uh, go into the GFS Ensemble model a little bit more for you, particularly looking at cluster models. But for now, I think you should start considering getting some plans in place for the back end of next week onwards. It looks like we could be going into, uh, into a cold spell of weather with winter arriving proper. But as I always say, anything could happen happen. Don't get running away now expecting to see headlines. I will think you probably will work you on certain daily newspapers. Mega freeze on the way. We don't know yet, but it looks like this is going to be uh, winter proper. OK, so keep the sun shining. Thank you for watching. I'll keep you updated throughout the day on the musings. And of course, um, others who blog on will also keep you updated on the musings too. And um, if I need to update the video later with later information, then I'll do that. But for now, thanks for watching. Keep the sun shining.